Okay. Uh, Mayreen, Paul, Tasha, Doug, Donna, Joy, Chris, and me. Did I get everybody? I believe so. Okay, awesome. Okay, item number one per the use is the approval of uh, previous meeting minutes, which I we had a, a little meeting right before the world exploded. Oh, I see your big hand. There we go. Okay. And uh, so we had uh, a meeting before the, uh, the world sort of stopped, and I have to put a few sentences together to send to everybody. I'll do that. Pardon me. I've been working on a bunch of other stuff, so I didn't get to that, but I'll send that out and we can approve it. Um, really, the last time that we met, we just were updating. I think we were getting to, we were like really sort of in the last week or two of the bathrooms being finished. Um, and now we're sort of still sitting there with a couple of little things to, to, to be done, but no big deal. Uh, and then the and then the world stopped. And then the other discussions that we had that were relative but aren't relative were for events coming up, and uh, our stuff with the events coming up. Obviously, with the things that were going on, um, you know, everything's been uh, suspended indefinitely um, outside of uh, construction and um, and 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 building stuff. Uh, so I'll defer those meeting those minutes to the next meeting. I'll write a couple sentences about that. And then just uh, like uh, number two on our agenda, which is the COVID stuff. Um, obviously, we've um, everything's been suspended per uh, local and state orders, and uh, which was really kind of a bummer because this was our this was our spring to shine. This yeah. was our swan song. I know. We were supposed to be partying from I don't know <laughs> from March to like August. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that you know that's unfortunate and. Um, I'm sure you've been in a bunch of meetings and been reading the news, so there's nothing really that I need to explain to people other than I think, um, you know, we're closed, uh, you know, indefinitely at this point, or at least for a couple months, not that we had anything uh, uh, really pending that, that hasn't already, already been uh, canceled. Um, but hopefully we can pick up again, you know, towards the summer and towards the fall and, and, and see where things are at. Um, does anybody have anything they want to say about uh, cancellations? One thing I could say about the cancellations, um, you know, I've talked to Joy enjoy uh you know the high school stuff was canceled um i talked to anna morell we you know we canceled or was canceled for us the um acapella and then they didn't reschedule anything or do anything virtual that i know of um i talked to the cultural council because they were going to do their grant recipient reception and they decided to do that um i asked them if they were going to do a virtual thing or something online we wanted to be a part of it to still somehow house it um, they said they were going to just basically put out the awards and that there was nothing planned to be online. But I did check in with everybody uh, to see where they were at and try to get us involved in anything in a virtual way, if that was possible. Uh, nothing really nothing really panned out as far as virtual stuff. Uh, I think that's about it. Does anyone have anything they want to say about canceled events or just what's been going on or what's going on with you? Is everybody okay? Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, so that was number two. Uh, number three, uh, and this is this one, uh, this is a, I sent out a bunch of documentation on this, and this is stuff that we've reviewed before, which had to do with the elevator st study and the rear entrance, um, rear entrance options. And this is something that we reviewed the last like two meetings in different pieces. And then what I had Mike do was to, and I sent it out to everybody, was to take that study uh, the elevator study and to take the rear entrance um, options uh, diagram that we sort of looked at and sort of marry those together uh, because because of the fact that they're related that the elevator study was really done ahead of time to make sure that anything we did with the rear entrance uh, didn't conflict from a financial standpoint to just get a gauge of where we were, where we were at prior to starting this we, I think, believe that our elevator stuff was going to be like one hundred and fifty to $200,000. By doing this exercise and figuring out things, not only did we see lots of options for the elevator and, and they're in those sheets and the stuff that we had and we discussed them last time we met, we also learned that we were way off on our numbers and that our numbers were three sixty dollars to $500,000 uh, given, given current costs, which impacted just what we were going to do. Um, and the idea was that if we spent money on the rear entrance, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, $50,000, and it affected the elevator, if those numbers were where we thought, which was 150 to 200, which we were way off, um, you know, what kind of an impact? And we just didn't want to waste money and we didn't want to do things foolishly. 
So we learned that our numbers were way off. Um, okay. We talked a lot about different ways that the elevator could go in there, but what we really learned was that there was no consequence to our rear uh, potential construction options uh, because they didn't really interfere uh, in any kind of meaningful way uh, from, from a financial metric. So after we knew about the elevator costs and the uh, associated uh, conditions with that, we were able to go forward with the rear entrance options, uh, which is a high priority item. And we agreed that uh, we were gonna move forward and, and price. We went through and looked at several different options and then came down to the fact that we were interested probably in the most conservative option. And in that package, in addition to the studies, you know, one leading to the other, I had Mike price out the most conservative option, which we agreed was where we were probably gonna move forward to. And, uh, and again, surprise, surprise, the price stuff came out way more than we thought. We were thinking it was twenty to $30,000. The estimate came in at 49,000. And uh, that's okay, um, because now we know it and we have a mark to go for. And uh, given our budgets and money that we've spent and projected budgets, um, that's within our budget. We should probably, uh, at that point, oh well, someone either just came in or left. Um, given our, um, budget and uh, where that's at. So that's, that's within our budget. We should have somewhere, I would say, um, between 70 and $80,000 left in our account. I have to talk to uh, our finance guys on that. And our estimate for our rear entrance came in uh, at 49,000. So we are within budget as far as wanting to do that project. So, oops, I lost something here. So um, that was a lot of talking. Did that all make sense? and? Is there a flow there? Yep, there is a there is a flow. So I, what I thought was interesting when I was looking at the um, and when I was looking at the diagrams for the elevators, you know, we real we just keep anything that's external, we just keep bumping up against that, you know, the the property line, and that same I think is still the same um, for the the back the back door, or do we do we not have any issues with the back door, or do we? Or are we assuming that that last little piece over there above the stairwell that's on someone else's property is we're sort of grandfathered? I, I would like to understand that at some point, no matter what we do with the back. Yeah, for sure. The options that are out there, which I think is, uh, I think, what was it? Maybe a total of four or five that went in there, three that were heavily considered. Um, several of them, I want to say at least two, maybe three, have them going internal. And that property line is, is definitely not, it's not a grandfathered thing, but uh, again, the big thing that we learned was that we weren't doing a money dum dumb thing. We weren't uh, impeding, you know, moving forward to the rear entrance. That being said, if we chose an option that infringed upon that property line, we would definitely have to deal with that. Yep. And um, chances are it would be okay, but um, you know, the back little corner of the bump out on the back, is technically on bank property and it has been for a long time. Yeah, because so, aren't we, before we even do anything, we're a foot and a half on their property? In the back corner, if we were to right. do an option that right. was so like. So before we even do anything, right. we're already on their property. Right. Yes, right. yes. That, that's, that's a yep, good point. Okay. That, and, so, and I think if, if we're not doing anything else beyond our property, you know, and, and this is maybe where we need some, you know, validation from somebody is, you know, are we safe to proceed with, you know, doing a, a doorway out back? I just would want to make sure we're not going to run into any issues. Right. And, and where we're at with that is um, the doorway is unaffected by this because the doorway is all within our property. It's yep. if we went to do an elevator, there's, I think, five options in there. I could be wrong. Maybe it's six, maybe it's four. But two or three of the options would have no effect as well. It's if we chose an option that infringed upon the property line that we, we'd have to address it. Right now, we're fine. And, um, it, it, and I'm assuming that where we're going to go tonight, and not necessarily, but uh, what we sort of agreed upon last time, and, and we're going to put it all together in a book, was, uh, was that the rear, uh, rear ADA entrance, we were going to go with the conservative approach, and we'll, we'll, we'll formalize that uh, hopefully tonight. Uh, and if we go with that uh, conservative approach, that doesn't have anything to do with the property line. That's 100% free and clear uh, from a legal standpoint, from a property line standpoint, and from a budget standpoint, we have the money. 
So, um, so that, that wouldn't be a problem. Now, down the road being a year, two, three, whenever $500,000 or so shows up, which, you know, that'll be a couple of years. Um, at that point, if we chose an option that messed with the, with the property line, we're, we're going to have to, we're going to have to handle it, but uh, it's far enough up, off in the future that I think that we, we've researched it to a reasonable and professional degree to make sure, you know, we, we've covered our bases and, and done our due diligence that for short term stuff, such as the rear ADA entrance, um, we are unaffected and we are aware of the budget stuff and we're not doing anything that's going to shoot ourselves in the foot uh, because we went ahead and did our research and, and it just took a long time. Look at Doug's background. <laughs> and did our homework. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, that elevator study and rear ADA entrance thing, you know, big thing was um, our rear ADA entrance isn't going to impact the future elevator thing. We're not doing financial dumb stuff. Uh, the second thing was we went through uh, the rear ADA entrances, looked at the five or so different versions of those. And last meeting, we agreed in principle that we were going to go with the most conservative one. Um, and that was when we thought it was even cheaper. Um, and uh, we thought that was the smart approach just with money. And, and that was before all of this, too. Uh, we it's decided, also, Chris, the best design, too. We're not just. I think so, too. Yeah, we're not just being conservative. It's the, I, we all thought it was the best look. Right. Yeah. So. yeah. Just Agreed. wanted to clarify that. I do have a, a question. If I remember correctly, Joy, I believe there's a step out back that you yep. uh, I fell you, down one time oh that was a rough well, yeah. that. <laughs> I know that step. <laughs> all right so so I don't um it, it in the and de the designs for the rear entrance um all, it all looks like it's flat land and yep. which it isn't so I don't Chris do you know was that discussed or talked about how it was factored in yeah um, there's a, there's a grading there's a grading portion with um with that option there's a grading portion actually in all of those options to get that you know leveled out and to basically smash up that concrete and stuff and to get it so it all flows evenly in okay. with the door. Okay, good. So, right. um, yep. yeah, that's, that's. I wanted that's, to just make sure it was overt because that, that would be work. And then the, oh, shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, the other question I had about um, is, uh, I don't know what the technical term is for it, but it's like the right of way. Once we come off of our property, we're yeah. into a parking lot. And did you guys talk about, because I don't think I was at the last meeting. Did you guys talk about the rights of way and you know, I mean, if we build this, can someone then go block that off and we no longer have access to that rear <laughs> rear entrance? So one, yes, we did talk about it uh, yeah. for sure. And, uh, and we have, uh, and I have uh, documentation surrounding that. Um, it might not be in that package, but I, I have it uh, and we've gone through. There is an eight foot easement uh, between the buildings. So no, we can't be blocked in. If we go ahead and do this, uh, nobody could block us in with a parking lot and then our entrance isn't any good. With the uh, oh, does the easement run along the side of the um the back of the bank in the yeah you know lot? the you know the, you know the the lines where it says no parking that big no parking yes line? yes 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 yeah that's that's the easement easement okay it's eight feet okay so no matter what happens even if they put a parking garage in there for some reason yep. we're gonna have eight feet between the buildings to get out to Chestnut Street and and I have the documentation on that and we did run down we did run down that that's been that's been um fully explored to make sure that we didn't make a big awesome mistake. okay um so that so that package is there and i think that mike um mike did a good job it, it's a little like at first i was trying to make it a little bit easier to read because we sewed it together because there's a lot of you know design sheets and and i was trying to read it like an eight and a half by 11 but each one of those design sheets is not eight and a half by 11 that's like a huge architecture sheet so it's got all the, the stuff, it's got the drawings on the right, it's got the 3D things on the left. So there was lots of scrolling and I had a tough time reading it initially. And I was trying to figure out a way to make it easier. And then I, I, I just sort of got to the point where I accepted it. Um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of data in there. And then we've already gone through and sort of ripped it apart to the point where we believe that we want to go with the conservative, which Joy pointed out was also the best approach Thank you. Um, there. Uh, so the, I mean, I think the book is good and, and I like the fact that we have it together now versus um, it was just a couple random documents. Now the estimate was in a document uh, that came late. The elevator stuff was in one document and then the rear stuff was in one document. So it's all smashed together. It's got a table of contents. 
it serves its purpose and it's also, we can publish it and make it available so that people can review the due diligence that we did to get to the point where I think at this point, we're all on board with uh, moving forward the rear ADA uh, entrance with the most conservative slash what we thought was the best approach. Does that sound like what everyone's on board with? Okay. Um, so uh, I'm gonna keep going, but I'll come back and reference that one more time just to get like one last sort of yay. Uh, there's a little bit more uh, here. So uh, during our, our last uh, meeting, around the time of our last meeting where everything was going on, the bathrooms were just about finished and I was spending, you know, from 5.30 in the morning till, you know, eight o'clock talking to the contractor and then after work and it was like every day, it was very, 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 very busy. Uh, and then we got a, a request to present to town council, which came in with not a lot of notice. And, um, and so we uh, asked to defer from that. And uh, fortunately we were able to defer, which uh, wasn't a big deal. Um, it just, it was a real busy time where the, the bathrooms were coming to an end. The studies were coming to an end. We had a lot about ready to report. We just needed like another two weeks to get it together because of what's happening. Uh, we got more time than that. And, uh, I was able to go through and, and, uh, so we got the, the book together, which we just talked about a bunch. Um, and then I was able to put together a Google slides presentation and I worked on that for a while and then I got it out and then I got a lot of feedback. Donna gave me feedback. Joy gave me feedback. Doug gave me feedback. A few other people gave me feedback or said they liked it. And so we twisted, uh, we changed the color to get it to match our logo more, which gave it a, a you know, nice visual twist. Doug came in and helped me with a lot of punctuation stuff after I built that thing. Cause that was a long time to build. I just couldn't even see straight. So Doug came in and fixed some of the spelling stuff and Joy. Teamwork. Said, yeah, take the color, and we got that together, and I think it looks, I think it looks pretty good now, and I updated the dates, and it, and it, you know, it's got the components of, um, you know, what I teach my students, which is, you know, when you give your presentation, you want to talk about where you came from, where you're at, and where you're going. So I think that we talk about where we came from, we talk about where we're at, and then with the ADA entrance in the next few months, even with us not being able to get in the building, we can still do this stuff, and, you know, where are we going? We're going to get that done. So it's where we're at, uh, where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going. So I got that presentation together, and that, you know, that was looking pretty good. And then um, I got a hold of um, our good friend, John Natale, and um, wrote some stuff together, showed him the presentation, talked to him a little bit. I mean, we know that John just, he just writes awesome. If you read the, the cover letter that, you know, we talked about it, and, and we went back and forth, and I've just got a rhythm with him now that I'll say, let's talk about this a little bit, let's talk about that, and I'll sort of show him how it is and then he just comes out and it just sounds so great I if you read I mean I was very impressed especially after the chicken scratch meetings we had but he was able to go back and do stuff that he'd helped us with the year before and then just really smooth it out so that we could tell the story and I mean we almost uh, I did the presentation because I was anticipating sitting and doing a presentation and then he did the cover letter which could almost stand alone by itself but having the two together where it's okay, guys, here's our, you know, here's our presentation. Here's, a, here's what we're, we're covering. Here's what we've done in a written format, the letter to the town council slash the community as the preface, and then, you know, into the Google Slides presentation. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, if you have any questions about the research, you know, that other document is an appendix. Between those three documents, I mean, that's, that's a lot of work. That's, that's, that's a really powerful update. And, and Paul's on here, Revis. I was on the phone with him last week. And, uh, and we were talking specifically, he was just talking about the great work that Mike Kilkelly has done in getting that, not only getting the document together, but just getting all those drawings and doing all that. That's, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of heavy lifting. And so, um, so he got that together. So at this point, at the end of tonight, um, I'm going to say that, you know, we're ready and, and, and I'll give Marine a call uh, probably after our meeting or tomorrow, the next couple of days, just to talk about it. And I'll put together a package and that package will go to the town council. Um, it'll probably also go to the uh, go to the papers so that they can see all this stuff. Uh, it'll definitely go to our, our state reps who, uh, you know, I've had many conversations and I've been in the state house a bunch of times this year and talked to all these guys. So, you know, follow ups for, um, well, I don't know our new person, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll send it to Paul Broder, you know, uh, still uh, because he was helping us out last summer when we were in there. And uh, so I think all of our main stakeholders 
which, you know, and, and conceivably I might even forward it over to some cultural council people just so that they can see that, you know, where we're going since we did our study with them, which was. That's a great idea, Chris, actually, to share it with the, especially those folks that worked with us a couple of years ago. That's a great idea. And they're, and they're, you know, they're the people that we're going to, you know, as we need to, when we start going towards elevators, they're the people that are going to be able to help us out. And that's everything from, um, uh, I can't think of her name now, the woman who runs the cultural council to the guy, uh, Jay, that was the guy that does the buildings fund to, to all of that stuff. And then Amanda uh, and, and a few others there. So cool. I'm glad that, uh, glad that you think that's a good idea. Uh, does anybody want to say anything? Let's open it up uh, about the Google Slides presentation. Everyone got the latest copy I sent again. You might kind of be sick of me sending documents, but I sent it again like two days ago with the new color and everything. I dug around and I tried to find the first minutes, but I've since con um, gotten a new computer. So I don't know that I have the very earliest minutes, but I think uh, we started having conversations in dis in um, like September uh, or November of 2015 for the Cultural Council. And I, I, I definitely have some, I, I have some minutes for I think January of 2016. Because I think it was Chris. I think Chris, you had asked at one point, how, how long have we been um, been meeting and functioning? Right. And I think our minutes go back to at least um, January of 2016. Right. I think we actually sat in September of 2015. I think we did. Yep. Um, was was the start because I remember just you know one of the first things that I did for the town of Wakefield when I you know first I built the Facebook page and we launched Facebook and all that stuff. And one of the first things that we did was the survey of the building because I was doing marketing support uh, for the town and we did that thing. And, and uh, so I remember it was Christmas, believe it or not, me and Joy, maybe around Christmas where we first met with the building inspector and stuff of 2014. And then we went through and put together a presentation and the presentation didn't kind of come out to the town council and stuff. And we were all sort of forming, but we were official until September, but yeah, 2015, 2016 is where we're at. I put in 2015 as our date because I'm pretty sure it was there, but we're pretty close. Yep. Uh, what else? Who else? Doug, what do you got to say? Tasha, anybody? So, Chris, can I just clarify? So, are you coming to the town council or no? Are you coming on Monday? Uh, well, we, as far as I know, we haven't been invited. Uh, okay. not, not that uh, we were there. So, uh, we were just really getting ourselves prepped. And then, you know, we couldn't make it that last time. Yeah, no. Um, that and that invitation did not come through me. I was not aware of it, and that was just a scheduling snafu. But I would love for this for you guys to do this presentation, and we're doing our meetings just like this via Zoom. And okay. so I'm happy, um, probably not uh, for this Monday, but our next meeting, and just suggesting to um, yeah the That's the chair that it would be great because it's it's a great presentation and I think you know we can do it like this and as many of you guys joining us would be great and then yeah. do, going through the slides and showing the pictures of the new bathroom and you know I I it's it's, a good story. it's unfortunate things have been put on pause but I you know I think knowing what you guys have planned once we hit unpause will just give people um, a little bit of hope and I think we're trying to find those opportunities of just people like getting excited for things come the, you know, late summer, early fall. Yeah, that was definitely the plan was to, you know, sort of get this together with everybody. And really my only requirement, not requirement, but my only thing I wanted to do was to have this meeting that we're having now because I've been doing it, you know, lots of legwork and I've been on the phone and texting with everybody individually a lot. And uh, now we're at the point where I think we have the polished intro letter. We have the polished presentation. We have a great appendix. We've got a great story to tell. So after tonight, I'll package it all up and I'll probably put it together in an email with all the, the, the main three documents uh, in a video that we'll talk about in a little bit. And, um, and I'll ship that off to everybody, but we'd be happy to present it like uh, the meeting after the, not this Monday, but the following meeting or whatever meeting. Yeah, Mary, do you know what, Mary, do you know what that date would be? I can tell you in a second. And then also, Chris, I'll, I'll email you, but Paul's replacement, her name is Kate Lipper Garabedian, and okay. she's great. So she was a Melrose city councilor and has totally been involved. And so if you could send it to her too, like Paul, you know, I don't know yeah. if Paul cares about Wakefield anymore. Um, 
He might. I mean, I've known hey, I've known Paul for a long time, and and he helped me out a lot of stuff. We did videos and stuff, and and at the very least, he's a friend of mine. Yeah. No, I'm saying that uh, he is also a friend. I was texting yesterday. So, um, Kathy, because of Memorial Day, our next meeting would be the 28th on a Thursday. But if that doesn't work, then the next one is. Uh... Oh, we have a lot of Thursdays coming up. Then the next one is June 11th. Because town well, meeting. certainly would seem like 528 is doable unless there, you know, there's a significant percentage of us that can't be there. But um, hopefully we can. And let, why don't we target for the 28th? Okay. I know, Kathy, I'm really busy. I mean, I have a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do these days. So, no, that this is uh, the 28th works great for me. So can't wait. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, just the, the recap of sort of the last two items is uh, everybody's cool with the documentation that we have, right? It looks, the the uh, PowerPoint great. looks really good. It looks really nice, really, really professional. I think it tells the story really well. The photos look great. It looks, it looks really good. Cool. And that was the last thing on that was really, and Doug helped me out with this this last weekend, was just getting the last bathroom photo. So just the quick last, the thing on the bathroom is, the trim on the tile, if you're familiar with it, we had a little bit of snafus. We're going to do it a little bit differently. We talked about it to death before, so um, no need to talk about it again. But what happened was Jim, who's the, the nice guy that works with the contractor, um, he was getting ready to go do it, and then they shut everything down. So then I talked to him over the last week, and I said, listen, I got this presentation. I got all this stuff ready to go. Uh, just for the bathroom side, I need a picture of the bathroom, even though we, we got to fix that last piece of tile. And he's like, don't worry, I'll have it done, I'll have it done. And then he sent me a note on Monday saying he was at a job where one other guy had the COVID and he's been quarantined for 14 days, so I wasn't going to get the picture. Or not that, yeah, it was last Monday. So then Doug went in and took a picture and then we just sort of tweaked it around, made sure that the, like, the seat was down and whatever. And then we got like a decent <laughs> photo. It's a, real, it's a real estate photo thing. When I was in real estate 20 years ago, that was like always one of the things. And Doug actually took the photos and I sent it back to him. I said, am I a jerk? If I say we got to put the seat down, come on. It looks better without what the way it is with the seat down. Yeah. So <laughs> we got to get seats. And then I sent more pictures to everybody uh, earlier of that stuff. So uh, from these two items, what I uh, want to do, and, uh, and I guess I'll sort of get a, I'll get a vote here for, for Kathy put in here is that, well, the first one is, um, everybody agrees that all the documentation is ready to be shipped to town council and our stakeholders? Yes, okay. I agree. Mm -hmm. anybody, anybody object? Nobody objects? Okay. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that I just want to make sure that we all agree on and is on record is uh, everybody agrees that we want to also, uh, with this, uh, move forward with putting together a bid package with the DPW. Uh, given that we've uh, checked out our um, and things that might affect it, meaning the rear elevator, we did the study. Um, we evaluated and looked at all the rear uh, options last meeting, and we agreed last meeting that we were going to go with the conservative approach. And then we got the price estimate, which was forty nine thousand dollars. So we expect it to be around forty nine thousand. We expect that we have somewhere around eighty thousand dollars, and I will verify that with uh, uh, Mr. Gill, uh, the finance people. But I'm pretty we're we're pretty pretty okay with that and I'll make sure but uh, unless there's something crazy that comes up that I didn't know of um, and then that being said that gives us the ability to then you know recommend and this is what I'm looking for a yay on that we are that we are going to move forward and send this to the DPW to assemble a bid package because we have the studies we have the drawings we have the money and the only the next thing that we need after everyone says yes is we need to build the bid package the good news is this is the second time I'm doing this, <laughs> too. So now that we did this with uh, the bathrooms, it should be easier. Um, we have all the stuff. Uh, we've already, you know, we've had the team of people that do the meetings, which are usually me, Mike Kilkelly, uh, Chris Pierce, and uh, Joe. That's usually the team, the, the team that does it. We'll go through, we'll, uh, you know, it takes, I don't know, they'll put together a package and then we'll look at it. But it's going to be probably way easier because the dependencies, like we have the, the leveling issue in the back where you were saying, what's the level and that, okay, there's that issue. There's some other stuff with putting the package together. 
we'll all get to look at this package. I'll send it out to everybody to review. So it'll be reviewed a bunch more times. This isn't putting a blessing on something that you're not going to see again. It's just putting a blessing on something that we're going to move forward with it and refine it and get a bid package out. So what I'm looking for is, yes, we want to move forward with the ADA entrance with the conservative option that has been selected uh, and the DPW to get a bid package out. Woo, yes. That yes. sounds great. Yes. Did we pick an elevator option already? We did not pick an elevator option because it's not required. That was part of the research was to see if we had to pick one or we had to pick a particular path. And what we figured out was that we're not going to impact our costs um, and that we could make that decision at a future date. And that was, and that was okay. That was part of the whole reason of why we did the research. Okay. All right. So everybody's good with that. No. So we'll say unanimous because nobody, nobody says no. Okay. That's, that's one of the biggest things that we're talking about tonight. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's like, okay. It, sure. I just want to tell you that I will remind you when you get frustrated again, that you said it was going to be easier the second time. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. Is anybody recording this? <laughs> I tell you, I feel great after having all this time off. I was... No problem. It's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard getting up at you know five o'clock in the morning and running till eleven with all these guys. Ugh. Okay, I'll, I accept that challenge to remind me again. <laughs> and and actually at this point I want to stop and I want to say thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm. you for. Oh, uh, you know, consistency, persistence, doggedness, everything, just pushing it along and caring as much as you do. I truly thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Um, and one of the great things was even going down and we've got a little tile things to do is I went down today to uh, actually, so I'll just mention this in here too. You might want to put this in the meeting minutes. Um, one of our flags is off down there. Uh, oh, the buntings? One the of the buntings? buntings. Yeah. Yep. So I bought new hardware for it. Uh, this happened a couple. This happened like six months ago too. One of the one of the hooks breaks, and uh, so I bought a new hook and I bought a new thing and I talked to James at DPW and I put it down there so they should have that fixed because, I mean, we want it to look great all the time, but you know we've got Memorial Day coming up and just we want to we want to look top notch. I don't care if there's a pandemic, we want to look pretty as long as we're. You know, once we've heard from. No excuse. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, th I appreciate that, and uh, and the thanks as, as as well for all that. Um, Actually, while we're while we're on the building, are we going to come back to? Oh, we're going to come back to building. Oh, under no, number seven with the picture hangers and stuff. Because this, you know, I is the is the bathroom done? I may have missed if the bathroom's truly done or if there's anything outstanding. No, there's there's a, a few things that are outstanding. Um, okay. So we haven't like signed any final final things. The the main thing that's outstanding is the trim tile. Um, there was a problem with that. The black trim tile came yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was bought from five different lots and whatever. So we decided to get rid of that, and it's going to be oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. A subway flat tile. So that's what that guy Jim has to do. He basically has to go in and take those black tiles that they put on the top that are all wrong and bowed and all that stuff and take those out and put a subway tile that's about three quarters the size of a regular subway tile and then has a, a curved, what do they call the bull nose top. And then it'll look super smooth. The way that, you know, the way that it was currently installed, there's lots of divots and grout issues and stuff. So he's gonna do that. Like once that's done, it's there. The other issue that um, I think we're just gonna have to live with was the doors that came in had what I considered sort of blotchy stains on them. They're like wood grain, right. whatever. Yeah. Um, I tried to character, some, that's yeah. character, Chris. That we'll just call it that. It's character. Yeah, it's outside the spec. Um, it's. I mean, I tried to fight for it for a little while, but we just got to move on. Okay. Um, so. Um, and do we just chuck that up to that's the way it goes, and you have to deal with it, or? Is that something we can look out for, like for the next time around, like for our next project, or I think just we, suck it up and deal with it? I'd say both. I'd say okay. we'll suck it up and deal with it for this one because it's just too much. I mean, I pushed on it for three weeks, and you know, yep. the door guy just all of a sudden disappeared. And but on this next round, 
Yeah, I mean, we want more supervision. We want, um, you know, there was, it was a little lackadaisical. There was uh, you know, people doing stuff that weren't being supervised, so we're going to have to keep a tighter grip on it. And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, so we'll stay on it. I mean, I'll ask for uh, approvals before do doors and stuff get put in. We'll, we'll, we'll have a meeting and talk about, you know, because a meeting that hasn't happened yet is between me, the architect, and uh, the DPW guys about what went wrong. Because, I mean, okay. we all, we've talked about it. We haven't talked about what went wrong. And a lot of what went wrong was unsupervised stuff that didn't go checked. And then we checked it. So hopefully, you know, we'll say, all right, well, on the second round, we need to put in some things to make it so that stuff doesn't happen again. And just do the best we can. Um, that's all I can do. Yep. Okay. Um, so, um, so that's that. So we're moving forward. We're going to sh ship the stuff out. I would guess that I'll probably have it out. I might just get it all ready by the weekend and then have it ready to roll like Monday, middle of the day, get it out to everybody at the beginning of the week. Um, just because after this meeting, I'll be exhausted and not want to look at it for a couple of days anyways. Um, so we've got that there. Um, next uh, topic is uh, upcoming programming. And um, so let's see here. I've got, um, I'm assuming or hoping that we can do stuff in the fall. But um, the one thing that I had that I put on here, and I don't know if anyone, has anyone ever heard of Sparkled at Heart on Facebook? Mm -mm. It's a woman who I know through the Michaels and AC Moore crafter people and my girlfriend and all these people that work at these craft stores. And um, she does wreath making um, videos in her like studio and she does it under the name Sparkled at Heart. Um, she used to work at AC Moore uh, I think just for the discount, because she was literally doing so, ma so many of these things. And with the pandemic, um, she would do them on Thursdays. And it's called uh, her show that, uh, that was on Facebook Live. It was called Slow Your Scroll. Um, so Slow Your Scroll. And she sat in her studio in, in her basement. She's got a camera. And she makes wreaths. And she makes awesome wreaths. And they're all really cool. And, and the Garden Club, uh, Wakefield Garden Club, my mother's friends have all looked at it. I looked at it. And, and I see her from time to time. And so since the pandemic happened, she's been doing them every night. She's done like 47 of them in a row. And um, I've just been seeing her show a lot more. And I see her and I talk to her and stuff. And then I asked her, um, you know, I said, we can't have anybody in, but we'd love to have you when we start having people again to do a wreath thing. But I asked, you know, um, would you consider simulcasting your Facebook Live so that, you know, we could have, uh, virtual and start doing some online content since we can't be open. She's doing this show, which is of quality and I've watched a bunch before and, and said, you know, would you, would you be willing to share? And then the idea would be once we get back open and stuff, you know, we'll have her in, you know, you know, once or twice or maybe more a year if it's popular to do wreath making stuff. And, uh, and she was open to that, uh, a no charge thing. So I'm looking into the idea with assuming that I have everyone's blessing that, um, if I could get her to simulcast her show maybe one day a week, maybe it's Thursdays, maybe it's Mondays, whatever it is. Um, and then she could, we could start offering programming through our website with this Facebook live scroll your, uh, slow your scroll thing um, to just provide content and to provide arts and culture stuff to the public. Um, I think that sounds like a great idea. The one thing that I'm thinking, though, just off the bat, is that maybe it shouldn't be on Thursday, because maybe when things start picking up again, we'll still do first Thursday. Yeah. But maybe something like this could continue. So maybe it, it should be, like, another day. I was originally thinking, like, Sunday uh, Sundays, like Sunday night, Sunday just afternoon. not Thursday, just yeah. so it wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have to undo something that you already started. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, no, that sounds right. Yeah, and, and it's, it's really, I'm just sort of the idea of would it be cool to, you know, to do this and to have virtual content of quality. And the best part is, you know, she's already doing this. So it's not like we have to say, hey, figure this out. She's already figured this out. So it's a simulcast. So it, the, the barriers, to, barriers to entry are low. And I agree, Thursday's probably not the day. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue that a little bit with Leanne of um, Sparkle That Heart and the Slayer Scroll. And um, I don't even know how to simulcast a Facebook Live video yet. Uh, I've been working uh, actually with your colleague, Joy Jonathan, and uh, 
talking about some video things, uh, trying to get some cameras and some stuff to go for some of these yeah, more. Uh, everything's uh, locked in school. So um, everything's it, locked in school. Facebook mm. just came out with a new thing. It's called Facebook Room. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of the same idea as, as Zoom, but if she's doing a Facebook Live, then I think you could probably just do, um, I haven't tried it yet, Yeah. But I think you can do like a, a Facebook Room and then other people just come into it. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know where it's going to go specifically. Yeah. What I do know is that she's got content, she knows how to do it, and it's no cost to us. That's so the big thing. Awesome. I mean, if she's going to do if she's used to doing it on Facebook. I'm just thinking that she could do some kind of a room through our face, through um, ACE's Facebook page. Okay. And people could join that. So then it would continue to be like co-branded with us because you would have to come to the cultural, you know, come to the ACE building online, you know, yep. to, to take the class. Just a thought. No, that's totally, that's totally where the ship is heading. There's so many, like, I, you know, I don't, I don't know a lot of the details, but for sure, if it, if it, if it works out that that's the technology thing that we do to make it work, great. Uh, so I'll, I'll pursue that with her. Uh, I don't know how fast or slow that's going to be. I did get her to agree the idea, to the idea. And uh, now we just got to figure out uh, how to do it, uh, you know, and practice doing it because I'm sure we'll screw it up a few times before we get it right. <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Uh, and then other future events, uh, you know, acapella will be back as soon as they can be a uh, can be back. I assume that we're looking towards the spring, uh, uh, fall, uh, and we'll wait for you know guidance from uh, you know the state and the town as to um, when we can actually have people uh, anywhere near each other. Uh, but I'm hoping that we have stuff for the fall, and with our bathroom stuff, if we can get a bid package out and that sort of thing, and Hopefully at that point, not only do we have bathrooms to show off, uh, we have we have a rear entrance. But in the in the meantime, you know the upcoming program is going to be not really much of anything. Uh, our work, um, but uh, you know, with, except for maybe the the sparkle that heart Facebook Live thing. Whereas most of the activity while we're shut down, we'll be working on the bid package. And I think we have another event for the fall, don't we? With um, the is it the Nimble Thimblers had signed up for something? I was just just going back to yep look at my minutes. Um, and then I think and I don't know in the in the past the um, Arts Collaborative has done things, but um, has has had events. Well, we'd have to see how things progress with that. So you know those are certainly possibilities as well. Yeah, I think for sure as soon as as soon as we're ready to go. As soon as we get, I mean, we'll make up an event. We got to show off the bathrooms. I mean, we could just have, we could just have a bathroom party. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that's illegal. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't wait to open up with with anything. I mean, you know, if, if we get if we get to go ahead to open up to do anything, we'll figure out an event. I mean, when we started this thing, we used to make up events sometimes the day before we had to have them just because we were trying to do it. So, you know, we can open up. Uh, I was in there today and I was dropping off the hardware and doing stuff and I like had to go to the bathroom. I'm like, ah, I got to go down. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> I can just walk yeah. over here. So my question to you is that, um, is someone still going through the building on a regular basis? That every day, every day the DPW. I'm not okay. sure who took it over. Somebody took over for Tommy. Okay. You know, this, so someone's walking through because God yeah. knows, I mean, anything could go wrong. Every single day, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, someone from the DPW goes through there, and then I think they come back later in the day. Um, I've gone in there a couple times. We've gone in there. But, yeah, um, all buildings in town are checked, I believe, first thing in the morning and by the end of the day. So I think they're all okay. checked at least twice. All right, good, good. Uh, for sure. Get those uh, video cameras installed so we can monitor it. Yeah. And we already approved that. We just have we just haven't done that. And especially, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that because that those are, at the, those are short money, and we want to know what's going on. And and even, you know, once we have the door and between the door and the bathroom, um, uh, you know, we did the whole key thing. We're gonna want to start knowing more specifically who's going in and out, at at a much more granular level. Right now, it's just this key list. Um, we'll we'll be putting in touch touch stuff. And, and getting an in out in out log uh, before too long. Okay. 
So I'm sure there's other stuff that, like I said, if we, as soon as we get the go ahead for, to, for anything, um, and that, you know, which obviously won't happen at least for, you know, a month or two, um, we'll sit on either a call like this or maybe even dare I say in person and talk about it. Uh, does anyone have anything else they want to talk about under upcoming? Well, as far as events go, when we do get together our virtual arts night, I'll yep. share it through us through the cultural exchange. Okay. And we can put it on there. When is it? I don't know. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out how to set up the gallery. <laughs> I'm thinking it might be June 1st. Let's just say like around then. Okay. Yeah. yeah whatever it is, you know, we'll do it. Uh, okay. So I'm going to move to number seven, which just says additional hangers acquired for the bathroom wall. So we talked about this last time um, for the hanging system that we have. Um, I bought, uh, what did I buy, Doug? <laughs> um, I bought uh, another another bar to put up on that wall where the bathroom is. Yeah. To, to hang photos, so I bought the stuff for that. Okay. So I forget how much. I think I forget how much it was. It was a hundred and something bucks, maybe. But it's it's the bar for the hangers, like the other two, plus some wires and other gizmos, um, and that showed up pretty quick. So I have that here. I'm assuming Doug or somebody else or whoever we did, however we did it last time. Once we can go in the building. We'll, we'll get it installed before we open up. It's not a hard thing to install, right, Doug? Not, yeah, well, not as, it won't be hard thing upon the wall. Things. Yeah, no, that, the, the new wall is sheetrock, so it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is for inside the bathroom, or is this on the outer wall outside outer the wall. bathroom? Outer wall. Okay. Outer wall, okay. We should, at some point, talk about what we want. Once he finishes the tile in the bathroom, we should figure out what we what we want to put in there for pictures or whatever, and and or if we have a rotation schedule, maybe you know we put up pictures for six months at a time in the bathrooms and then rotate them out, or we we'll, we can talk about that at another day. But we definitely need to put stuff in there. Yep. Uh, so that's number seven. Uh, bill payments. So um, I've got. Um, let's see. I've got. Oh, bill payments. Okay. Yep. I've got the uh, architect, which sent me a bill. I think we owe him thirty-eight hundred bucks for the, all the studies and stuff. Um, I've got a bill for whatever the hanger stuff was, a hundred and change. I've got a bill for Andy. Uh, we sent out the video for Andy. I sent out. I sent out the link, and I think what we're doing with that, or what we've decided to do with that, is um, he's done basically at this point, and um, we're gonna. Um, we're gonna uh, take that video, that one, that one that he has edited there. We'll, we'll put that probably with the package as, or as an addendum to the package to see that. And then all the raw footage is gonna be delivered to us. Um, I've got Kenny Vaughn Jr., who's um, one of Jonathan Perez's students uh, and, and a friend of mine and, and my friend's son as well. Um, he's gonna probably pick up on, on some of that footage and we'll do some stuff with them at a later date. Uh, but for now, we'll close off the chapter of acquiring all that raw footage. We'll work with that one piece that we have uh, that's been delivered. Uh, we'll pay off all our bills so that we don't owe anybody any money. Um, and that's the paying the bills thing. So we'll pay the architect, we'll pay Andy, we'll pay me for the thing, uh, for the hanger thing. And there might be one or two other bills. I, I get, whatever, 10 bucks in hardware. I don't know, there's nothing really big. Um, but there's, you know, uh, so we'll get all those paid. And uh, then we'll basically be clear and looking at our package development for the rear entrance. Do you? I think I, think I so mentioned it, everyone that needs to be paid. Okay, so Andy, Andy was how much? Do you? Do you? Am I putting said, in any uh, proc? I think it's five fifty is what we owe him. So five fifty, and um, I'll talk to Doug. Uh, might have one two second swap out at it, but other than that, maybe not. Um, other than that, we're done with that. We'll, and the big thing, he just has to deliver all the, all the source material so that we can have it archived. Um, yep, yep. And, and then, and then we can, and we can work with um, Kenny Vaughn Jr. Uh, on that. And, and a lot of that's going to change because our stories changed yep. because, you know, we got our new numbers on how much we need, you know, we're looking at a half mil, um, you know, we're, different numbers pitch. all change. So, and, and the politicians have changed, you know, Paul's, Paul's now the mayor and now we've got a new person. So we're going to re-architect that video story 
uh, into something useful. But we have a lot of good uh, we have a lot of good footage the first um, that we can looks use. Great. The what? The first segment looks great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just need to figure out how we want to tell the story from there. And I think yeah. the first segment is uh, actually on the new first segment. If you got the one that I sent today, the last last piece one, um, there's a couple really good historical photos that came from Nancy Bertrand from way like way old and then a light department one that weren't in there the up until this last one I just sent you today. Right. Those those are good shots. And so I you know and I talked to Doug and we'll and I'll talk to him after this. But we definitely want to make sure that we sign off so that we have permission to use those photos. Because those photos after the long haul long road that we've gotten to to get to here I wish I saw those photos, you know, months ago. Those things were great. They tell a great story. They fit in there perfect. Yeah, for sure. So we'll pay everybody. Um, that's a lot of stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff, but I think we covered a lot of stuff and got decisions tonight that I think are important to, you know, we recapped, which I think was important, and we made decisions uh, – which, you know, to get our report out there and to get our next step for the facility going. So I feel pretty good about everybody's getting paid. Everybody's, you know, we're sort of finishing off anything that had a loose end. Uh, we're going to do this new thing with uh, the bid for the rear entrance, but working on a bid for the rear entrance and not having to say the word bathroom anymore is very exciting. <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, was it two, uh, at least two, if not three years hmm. Uh, bathroom, 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 bathroom. I'm sick of them. I'm glad they're done. I want to have the party. And they're fabulous. <laughs> they really came out great. They do. I, I love that floor tile. I think that and that, that detail tile too. That I think it really looks good. It looks sharp. Right. Yeah. Um, what else? Anybody else have anything else on here? Anything that they want brought on to uh, next agenda? I'm going to assume – uh, I'll follow up with everybody. We'll figure out what our town council schedule is and, and I can talk individually with people on that um, because that's legal with open meeting law and we'll figure out and we'll get people dialed in. I think on the slides, um, you know, probably a couple of us, uh, maybe what we'll do, depending on how we do it, is we'll go through and I'll just sort of intro and then maybe, um, you know, Kathy, Joy, Doug, since you guys really focused in on that with me, maybe each one of you will just grab and explain one piece of it or something and then come back for a summary, but I think we've really got some polished materials that look really good mm -hmm. between the presentation, between John Natali and his magic words. Um, I mean, I think we have a really complete quality report. We've got really good stuff to show. I mean, we've got this fabulous bathroom. We've got these hangers. We've got this other thing. Our presentation looks good. Our verbiage looks good. I think it's, I think it's tight and, uh, and I'm proud of it. It should be. Looks good. Looks great. So um, any, any new business, anything we haven't talked about, anything you want on a future agenda? I just have a question for Maureen. Maureen, is there anything that you're hearing about that um, at the town level that, um, I don't know, that, that somehow intersects with, with you know, arts and culture uh, as far as I don't know, planning? I just wanted to overtly ask the question and see if there's anything new or interesting to share. Oh, is she on mute? You're on, yeah, you're on mute. mute. Man, I've been doing this for eight weeks. You think I'd be better at that. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, no, but I just, but you know, I was just thinking you know, all these things get talked about and there's cool stuff going on. And, you know, is there a little bit more of an arts and culture theme than maybe we sometimes think about? And it's not just all about the, you know, the, the cultural exchange. So that's why I ask. Yeah, we, we really haven't. And I think, you know, I think you guys coming in can be the start of the conversation. I think there's such a there's such a desire to look at it throughout the town. Um, but we really haven't had the conversation. Okay. And I yeah. think And there's been other distractions. <clears throat> there's been right. And I and you know, truthfully, I think um like Envision took up a lot of our space last year in a in a good way. But you know, talking about arts and culture throughout our town is something, you know, I'm looking forward to continue that conversation and have that conversation. And so there's always snippets, but there hasn't been a, you know, um, 
There's not a strategic plan on it. And so, yes, let's, let's start that conversation. The only thing that I know that we're missing, and it's just because of the nature of what's going on, is that, you know, we really wanted to do, and I think it was to set the playing field right before we went in. We have all this great documentation, which everyone's going to have ahead of time, which I think is a good predecessor to before we actually present. But we wanted to bring people in for tours, which is not possible at this point. Yeah. Because you really just want to warm it up versus, you know, a lot of people I think were coming in with little to no information or just partial information and we've created the package which hopefully answers most people's questions and then the other component to that when you're in a, a world where you can actually meet with people in person is to is to walk people through to see it but i think with our you know really good documentation um we've covered that as best we can mm -hmm. All right, I, mean, so I think the one thing that i would caution i mean this is just my conversations with the state is you know, we're not going to have a flip the switch and everything's going to go back to normal. And so to think about some sort of, of soft, soft opening. And so I, you know, as much as I love all the events that you guys do and when they're packed even better, I just don't think we're going to a place where we're going to have that. You're going to have to limit, mm -hmm. there's going to be a line and you're going to let, you know, 20 people in at a time. And one, one, I mean, just like market basket today, one goes in, one comes out. Um, I think that's the world we're going to live in. And so, you know, I, I envision in the fall we'll get back there, but I just, we're not going to go to the place where we're going to have a hundred people in there drinking wine and eating cheese. It's going like, to be a while. It's going to yeah. be a while for that, but I don't think it's closed forever. And I think, you know, if you guys have the plan of some really great exhibits and maybe more visual arts, cause you know, singing groups might take up so much space anyway, but I think, like people are going to be yearning for that, you know, we're yearning for kind of distractions and beauty, but I think you guys will just have to, we'll have to think about, you know, someone standing at the door and one person leaves and one person comes out. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about, and, and it's really not a gelled idea at all, but at one point we, we had, um, I forget her name, the woman who, with the writing, the writing class, um, you know, that, that's Pauline, a small yeah, thank you. That's a smaller venue with, you know, maybe there are opportunities to, you know, leverage the building once people are allowed to be in and, you know, there's um, in, in a public space and people start to be comfortable, but you could have smaller venues and maybe make the, the ACE building a place where someone could, they can't do it at their home, but maybe if they want to have a small class with six or eight people, there is the footage in, um, in, that, in that building. There's the space for people to be able to be there and be, be spread apart from one another, but still be together in the same room. And, and like I said, it's not really a gelled thought, but you know maybe there are opportunities for people that can't, can't do something out of their house, but need a little bit bigger space and they could have a small class or something like that. Absolutely. And, I, and we may have to go and adjust our um, application or event application uh, to address that stuff. Because now, because now the process that we have is, you know, people fill out their application and then we review them every 30 days. And then we assign um, a point of contact, which is one of us. And that, flow so we'll probably have to just adjust that flow to to make sure it works and i think a lot of it's going to be the same it's just a, it's just going to be a capacity corollary yep. well that's all i've got um paul, i'm going to say that I want to, ask, I want to ask paul if he had anything he wanted to share or comment on paul are you still there yeah i think chris has done a great job of pulling the uh what is really a feasibility study together for the building. And so now you have the opportunity once you have that document to, to take it to, I think it's Jay Paget at the state, start trying to talk about how to break the whole renovation of the building up into incremental projects that can be done over you know, five years, 10 years, and uh, start packaging it for maybe the, some submissions to the state for the elevator would be the next step maybe. And now that you have what is essentially a feasibility study, you've got the opportunity as you take people to tour the building to work that plan and figure out incrementally ways to modify it and improve it. Because it's, it's make it a you know, working document to keep 
massaging and improving every year. And maybe every year you think about what can we do the next year to improve the building. Um, then, you know, you can also think about your activities for the building on an incremental basis. Is what do you want to try to do this year and next year and the next year? And then how do you get there with improvements to the building? So I think Chris has really given you the keystone with that, with that document that he's gotten together with uh, um, Mr. Kilkenny and uh, what's his first name? Uh, Michael, Michael Kilkelly. Michael, Michael. I think what Michael did for you is, is really going to put you over um, on the, getting the building done. That's, that, was the document that you really needed to begin with. Um, it, it took us, took Chris a long time to get there, uh, to get to it, but now you have it. Great job. Thanks, Paul. In case anyone's wondering, um, uh, Jay Paget is the, um, I guess he's the director of the Cultural Facilities Fund with the state, and right. he works for Anita Walker, who is the Massachusetts Cultural, uh, Cultural Council Director. Right. And he's, he's the fellow who came and toured the building with us probably two years ago and said, well, you really need to plan first. Um, so now you've got something you can, I think, shop with him informally and get his guidance on how to keep refining it so that it, it is a fundable projects for him can be, can be packaged and put together. So yeah, I, th I think one of our next next things, um, you know, after we do the rear entrance really is, is the interior and what we're going to do with that interior space and, you know, the, the gift shop yeah. and the um, and the serving area, you know, we've, we've really yeah. got to figure that out and, uh, and have a plan about what we're going to do about the utility room with that we're using for storage and all that sort of stuff. So, so maybe, you know, the elevator isn't, maybe the elevator isn't the next piece that you want to do. Well, I think there's fundraising for all of it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that, that, that's what you have is a, essentially a feasibility study that you have to sort of work the document, keep keep you know, refining it and thinking about how you really want to go next. The, the good news is on the interior, like as far as the back room where the, the slop sink is now and the gift, the gift store and all that stuff, Taking those walls down, if we decided that was what we wanted to do, is actually a fairly short money thing. It's basically a little bit of demo, the walls come down, and then we just get the rug guys, but we're talking a lot of stuff that can be done internally. If we told the DPW to smash down those walls, because none of them are um, load bearing. Load bearing. There's yeah. the only thing, uh, the only thing that uh, is load bearing is inside of the, one of the walls there's a pole that matches one of the other poles. Oh, a, the other three. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So those would come out. And, um, and we looked at once upon a time ago, you know, each one of those series of poles that goes across, if we were to get rid of, rid of them, it's like a $20,000 beam to, you know, get rid of two poles, 20 grand. It's a steel beam that goes across to uh, cover that out. But we're, we're not there. <laughs> not we're right. not. We're not. If we if we have rear ADA accessible doors and we have two bathrooms, we're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, thank you, everybody. It's good to see you. Hopefully, everybody's staying well. Good to see everybody. I think we're gonna the basically the plan will be. Uh, I'll work with Maureen. We'll figure out. Uh, we'll I'll get this stuff all shipped off in the next couple of days. And then when we get on an agenda, I'll uh, collaborate with the the very. I mean, anyone can present that wants to present but i'll talk to the people that i think make sense to grab each slide and we'll talk about a strategy to do the presentation uh with the uh, town council so that we can make sure that everybody knows what we're doing sounds good sounds good thank you uh, other than that um you know same time same place next month bye everybody thank you, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.